What's up everybody Aditya Mahajan here and welcome back to yet another YouTube video. In today's video we will be solving another lead code question, question number 120 also called as triangle. It has also been asked in day 21 of a pre lead code challenge so let's get started. Given a triangle array, return the minimum path sum from top to bottom. So we are given as 2D vector or you can also say a 2D array named as triangle and we need to return the, the minimum path sum from top to the bottom of the triangle. We are also given that for each step you may move to adjacent number of row below. More formally if you are on index i on the current row you may move to either index i or i plus 1 on the next row. Okay so they have also given an example so let us look at the example to understand the problem statement correctly. So this is the triangle that we are given and we need to return the minimum path sum from top of the triangle to the bottom most row. Okay, so for this case, our output should be 11 and the path is 2, then 3, then 5 and then 1. Okay, and if we sum them, we get 11. So one more thing that they have mentioned in the problem statement is that we can only take the adjacent element of the next row. For example, if we take 2 from the first row and then we take 3 from the first row, uh, second row. So after 3, you can only take 6 or 5. You cannot take 7 as the next row element because... 7 would not be uh, considered as the adjacent element for the 3 because it has 3 as index i for example 3 as index i so 6th index is also i and 5th index is i plus 1 so that is what we can take that is the adjacent elements only should be considered for taking uh, the second row element okay so that's it that's the problem statement and uh, now let us look at how we can approach the solution of this problem. For solving the problem, we will be using a very similar representation for the triangle uh, in a 2D matrix form because it would be easier for us to do the operations. Okay, so uh, I think you can uh, map it for where particular which element is going where. Okay, so how can we solve it? For understanding uh, or thinking of how we can approach the solution, you need to think of what is the first operation that we are doing. In this case, we are taking a decision from, let's suppose we take the first element as 2, which is the only option. And after that, we need to take a decision that, do we have to go to the left hand side to the 3 or do we have to go to the right hand side with the 4. And after that too, we are doing the same thing. If we take 3, do we have to go to left hand side or do we have to go to the right hand side, right? So basically what we are doing here is we are taking a decision and whenever there is a decision, uh, we know that in most of the cases, we can solve that particular problem with the help of recursion. And when there is recursion, we can optimize that recursion problem with the help of dynamic programming. So let's see how this applies in our problem. Now that we know that there is probability of dynamic programming or recursion being applied in our problem, I want you to think in terms of asking for every particular cell that what is the shortest minimum sum path to that particular cell from the top of the triangle okay so for the starting few elements it would be the only one path because for two this is the first uh, element so it would be the only choice for three there would be only choice from two because there is no previous element right and for four two there is this is the only choice from two because there is no top element for four okay so the sum till three and four would be for three it would be five and for 4 it would be 6 okay now for 6 2 there is only one possi possibility that is from the 3 because uh, there is no previous element uh, of the 3 so for 6 2 we just have uh, 5 plus 6 that is 11 because uh, the sum till 6 would be uh, 5 plus 6 that is 11 now uh, when we look at 5 this is a very interesting case for 5 there are two possibilities that the minimum uh, sum path can be uh, can come that is from the 3 or from the 4 because uh, the index i can be from the 4 for the previous row and if i plus 1 is taken then the previous element can be 3 okay so what is the minimum sum that can occur so if we look uh, if we take 3 as its previous uh, rows element then the sum can be 10 and if we take 4 then the sum can be 6 plus 5 which is 11 so the minimum number from 10 and 11 is 10 so basically the path would be from 3 okay so here the minimum sum for fifth uh, the element having the cell having element as 5 would be 10 okay and now if we look at for 7 2 there is only one path that is from 4 and it would become 6 plus 7 that is 6 plus 6 12 and it is 13 okay now uh, 
it has become a bit messy so let me go to the next slide okay so i have directly created a new matrix which contains the sum so what previously we were doing is we were having elements in that particular matrix and we were writing sum uh in the just uh, beside it so the sums were 11 10 and 13 so what i have basically done is i have put the elements here and just taken the cumulative sums in the second matrix that is 11 10 and 13 those are the same thing and i have also mentioned from which path uh, it was showing the minimum distance okay so if we continue for the last row then we were having that uh, for four uh, there is only one possibility from top that is from six because there is no element in previous okay so it is 11 plus 4 gives us 15 for 1 2 uh, we have two possibilities that is from 6 or from 5 so uh, the minimum from minimum for 6 and 5 is 10 because uh, we are we are adding the same thing that is 1 next so the minimum would give us from 10 so we the path for uh, the cell having element 1 would be this one okay and its sum would become 11 and similarly if we go forward for rest of the elements we will get their sums also which are 18 and 16 and we can see that we have uh, successfully found our answer that is 11 which is the minimum path sum so from this example we have understood that for each element there are two possibilities that for that particular cell uh, the path can be from the element from the just exactly above it or from the element which is uh, index i minus 1 and j minus 1 okay so let us quickly look at the dp equation okay so this is the equation that we are getting now uh, from the example try to relate it with the example uh, that whatever things we have done so what we are doing is for every element i comma j we are checking that what is the minimum sum of that particular element from the top okay so we are adding that to the current uh, elements value which will be equal to minimum of either of t of i minus 1 j so basically t of i minus j would correspond to any elements top element okay so its ith index would be the previous row and j would be say, from the same column okay so the minimum of this okay so it should not be plus it should be comma okay so minimum of this or minimum uh, or the second element that is to be considered is the uh, i minus 1 and j minus 1 which is uh, from the previous row and the column of the its previous uh, column okay that would give us t of i minus 1 and j minus 1 so we are basically taking minimum of t of i minus 1 and j or t of i minus 1 and j minus 1 okay and one thing uh, to note here is that j does should not go out of bounds should not go out of bounds out of bounds whatever you have got what i'm saying also from uh, the equation that we have just written uh, the one more thing that we can notice for any particular element let's say five we are just requiring its previous row sum values that is for five we just need to check it previous its previous row right if we look at one we just need to check its previous row from the equation it is clear that is we are having i minus one or i minus one and j minus one okay so we do not need to take care of any previous elements value so by this we can say that we do not need to keep an n squared matrix we just can keep uh, an array which would contains the current uh, iterating loops uh, value and its previous just its previous row and we can get the answer directly by that okay so now let us look at the code so that you will understand it much more better so before starting to code i also wanted to mention one more thing that some people would say that uh, we wouldn't be require o of n space we can uh, directly do it in o of one space by directly modifying the input vector input uh, 2d matrix and then doing all the things and then giving the output but uh, i would say that in some cases there is a condition that you do not have to modify the input vector and just give the output so in that case uh, the previous approach for modifying the input uh, or 2d matrix it would just go in vain okay so i wouldn't consider that as solution if you need that solution too i will be providing a link in the description and that would contain uh, that solution too okay so let's start in the coding part of having o of n space okay so now basically what we are doing here is we are taking a variable n 
which is the total number of layers in the triangle so if you look at the problem 2 uh, the maximum number of layers is also the maximum number of elements that we can have okay so we are creating a vector with that particular number of maximum number of elements and as we just saw that we just require its previous layer to calculate the current layer so we are just taking a vector rather than a 2d matrix okay so we are taking a vector of size n that is maximum number of elements and initializing everything to zero after that uh, we are uh, initializing the first uh, element of that vector to the topmost element of the triangle okay because uh, we do not need to do anything in the first layer now we are doing two for loops uh, one for the row and other for the column and we are starting with i equal to 1 because we just put uh, the value for the topmost uh, element of the triangle and we are uh, keeping the jth loop from j equal to i because only the half of the elements are present as we saw uh, and we need to iterate just from uh, j equal to i okay till the start element okay we can do it reverse too okay so uh, in this case we are uh, categorizing the things into three parts that is if our element that we have of the current layer that we are iterating is the first element or if it is the last element or if it is in the middle element as we saw uh, if the element that we have is the first element then we are we were having just one option that is the top uh, the path would be just from the top okay and similarly if we are if we were having the last element then there was also only one path that is from the one previous element that is diagonally okay that is i minus 1 and j minus 1 okay and if that is not the case then initial then uh, for any element that is in the middle there were two paths that is from just exactly from the top or the uh, in the previous layer a previous column also okay so that is what we are doing if j equals to 0 we are taking output of 0 and uh, just adding it to a triangle value if j equal to i that is we are at the last element then we are doing output of j minus 1 that is diagonally previous element and then adding it to the i and j of the triangle value and if that is not the case we are doing minimum of that is output of j that is just the top element of the current iterating or minimum or the minimum of output of j minus 1 that is previous column and previous row okay and just adding it to our triangle i comma j and after that after iterating from these four loops uh, what we are left with we will have a vector that means the output vector would contain the last uh, bottom most column sum cumulative sums and we just need to return the minimum element okay so i am using a minimum element function that is from stl which takes the begin and the end counter and returns the minimum element that is present in our vector so that's it that's the solution of our problem uh, now let us quickly run our code okay so i'll just run it and i'll just submit it and yes we are faster than 90 percent and less than 70 percent uh, in my previous run when i submitted it gave me faster than 100 percent of time so anyways that's all for this video guys uh, if you like the video hit the like button if you did not understand anything leave a comment below and the code link will be in the description and that's all for this video see you in the next one Bye bye